everyone have access to the RTA database when they conducted their investigation? Yes, they did. Did the Attorney General find any fraud? No, they did not. I do turn it around. I'll, it says help desk. It helps. It helps. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> How long does it take for you to get something from the help? Doesn't take me very long at all. Okay. The uh, can you tell me what that bag is? What, what's what's in there and what the story is behind this thing? Right. The bag contains a, uh, a laptop. Uh, we, we were attempting to uh, provide the source for an in-camera inspection of, uh, on your part. So we took a uh, one of the help desk laptops that they use as loaners, cleaned it off. Uh, I made sure it had Microsoft Access on it. And we then loaded uh, gems onto it. Um, I contacted uh, Diebold, and they gave us permission to uh, to do this for this limited use. Um, and then uh, we we copied from uh, right after uh, when when the attorney general did their um, extraction of the information, their forensic extraction. Um, I had a, a USB uh, connected drive attached, and we we made a. a a copy of the files so I could see them and be able to look at them as well without doing this work on the election server because this this is sacrosanct land you, you know, we don't mess with that machine it's set up and we don't change anything on it so I had the files copied off we had chain of custody uh, the files are were in my possession when they were loaded they were loaded under the witness of two people and we've loaded the uh, we, we didn't load all of these files that Mr. Denker was talking about. We loaded the, the general election for 2006 as an example of that election. Uh, so so the, the laptop contains GEMS, contains Microsoft Access, and, uh, and the November 2006 uh, election database, MDB file. And is this one of the MDB files that you understand the plaintiff is seeking in this lawsuit? Uh, yes, it is. Who did the copying of, of these files? Is it you and, and who else? The, well, uh, Bill Allaire, who is the uh, systems uh, programming manager for the uh, IT department, uh, and I did, did the copy. The, um, the laptop was set up by Greg Carr, who is the IT help desk manager. And he, he created it, and then Bill Allaire and I copied the uh, GEMS and the database onto it. Is the version of GEMS that is on that laptop is it the same as the, is the Pima County GEMS on the GEMS server downtown? It is. It's 118.24. Just to be clear, I, I said downtown, but I meant to say out of the mission. The mission <clears throat> and uh, have there been any alterations made to the gems or the access program or the MDB file? Any any changes? The all? one the one thing we did was uh, I changed the password just to make it simple. Um, I, I obtained the password from the election staff, and then made made a much simpler password. The other thing that's in here, which I failed to uh, explain, uh, we, we wrote out uh, instructions on how to look at it. That's a step-by-step -step process on how to log in and that sort of thing. And I believe that's here as exhibits C1 and C2. Can you describe on the 
Exhibit list. C1 is described as, I don't know why I'm showing it to you, they're just manila envelopes, but um, C1 is described as manila envelope allegedly containing confidential step-by-step -step instructions for use by the court during an in-camera inspection ray access. And C2 is uh, manila envelope allegedly containing confidential step-by-step -step instructions for use by the court during an in-camera inspection ray gems. Assuming that they contain what I just described, can you explain what that means, ray access, ray gems, step-by-step instructions? Yes, uh, the access instructions uh, were written by me, and essentially I, I took the database, not on that, not on this laptop. Uh, I did it on on a test server that I have access to, and opened the each table, not each, not every table, but some of the tables, opened them up, showed what the table looked like, but essentially uh, did that for a few, and, and it's a step-by-step -step process. If you'd like to look at this, these these are the steps that you follow. The uh, the the gems part of it is the same thing. It, it explains how to log into gems, and then how uh, what you would do to go through to set up an election, and where the drop down menus are across the top, and what what contents are in those menus. Uh, once that part was done, then uh, th then it shows uh, down the left hand side of the gems uh, window are the different types of data that are there, ballots, districts, um, races, uh, and that, that approach. And so as you click on those things, you see different views of the software. And then uh, by, by contrasting those and showing the two in Access, I also showed you how to look at queries uh, in, in the Access database. You cannot see the query when you look at it from GEMS. You create the report in GEMS, and then you it, it, it's, it's stored in the database, but you don't see the actual SQL statements in GEMS. Have you done these things yourself? That, that is to say, have you investigated MD and MDB file using using Microsoft Access? Yes, I have. And have you investigated a, an election database using GEMS? Yes. Can you, to the best of your knowledge, has have have, the, have those instructions for this computer been provided to the plaintiffs? Uh, I don't know. I don't believe so. I don't know. And, and do you know why not? Well, our concern was that it reveals uh, in, in doing some of the screenshots and the information that's in there uh, that would reveal that the very information that we're trying to protect. So our, our, our goal was to, to provide it in camera for your review, um, but not have it out where it could become part of the public uh, record of this trial. So, Your Honor, at this time, I would like to admit 26 exhibits A, B, C1, and C2 to the court in the event, uh, Your Honor, that the court would like to look at these things and see what we're all talking about. Response? Yes, Judge, I absolutely object. You know, the, uh, we believe in transparency. I don't want, uh, without being drug into it, to uh, have a situation where Dr. Moffat creates secret instructions that a judge looks at secretly in his chambers that would be used to arrive at a decision where we've had testimony by umpteen experts and where they've got the duty to show and prove in open court the specific harms of the release to us. And um, I, I don't know what they uh, expect the, the court to learn, but that this seems to me to be a, uh, an odd process that we strongly object to. 
Let, let's divide it up because there's really two requests that I received. One is the in camera inspection request, and then the second is the uh, both the data that I'm getting and I suppose the instructions as to how to use that since it's not as simple as just looking at a piece of paper. Um, let's break them up in terms of whether you're objecting to both. So yeah. I'll, we'll start with the in camera inspection. Is it is it the plaintiff's position that uh, I should not do an in-camera inspection? Yes. How do you reconcile that position with the instructions that the Supreme Court has made in cases involving balancing that the court you know, should do an in-camera inspection? It seems to me that, in fact, in a number of cases where the trial court has declined for a variety of reasons to do an in-camera inspection, one of the first things that the, either the Court of Appeals or the Arizona Supreme Court did was to say, we're not going to engage in the uh, in-camera inspection ourselves. We looked at the legal reasons why the judge declined to do it, and we found those to be wrong as a matter of law, and we're now remanding for an in-camera inspection. Uh, it does seem to me that the threshold issue is frequently, has the trial court looked at this? and made a determination of whether this is the, whether it's a public record or if it is a public record, um, the well, balance. I don't think the issue is here, like for instance, you said the question of whether it's a record or a public record. You're looking at this as I'm going to resolve that question. And certainly in the, the lawsuit relating to, let's say, the private emails, that was the question, whether it was a public record or whether it was a not public record. I don't believe that they're asking you to make that decision. My understanding is they're asking you to see what's harmful. And they're giving you instructions of who knows what in there. Uh, and I, I, I don't know what kind of uh, uh, arguments, suggestions, what they're up to. And then you, you would then come back and say, I've looked at it and it looks harmful to me. Well, let's yeah, the, how do you get to examine any of that? You're overlapping the categories. That's okay. right. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. The first one is you don't care whether they gave me instructions or not. You just don't want me to do an in-camera inspection. Is that your legal position? Yeah, it, it is. Okay. I, I don't like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and is it that you believe that the appellate decisions are wrong when they require an in-camera inspection, or do you just believe that, uh, how would you distinguish those cases that require an in-camera inspection? Well, I'd do it on the basis that you just referred to a minute ago, that if, uh, if it was, those inspections were to determine whether something was a public record or not. I understand that like, their inspections were uh, those private emails provides uh, a, an excellent example. Uh, and that was to determine, okay, in... Um, take, uh, take both cases, for instance. They're, they're there's privileged. the Bridges case and then there's the Ellis case, which involve, uh, one of them involves clearly a public record. The Court of Appeals found that. And they still required an in-camera inspection. Uh, so that the court could make a determination as to what information of that, that victim of sexual assault should have her private information redacted. And, and that required uh, the court to make that determination and no one else could make it. Okay, I mean, I'm not arguing there's any precedent here. I, I just don't think there's precedent for this person. Uh, you know, in, in uh, you know, you, you do it all that could alter the, the context. But if I look at what you're asking to receive prior to its disclosure, assuming that's my order, that, that seems to be uh, exactly in compliance with what is the general principle. So if the court has any question about it, the court has to conduct an in-camera inspection, and it would be legal error for me not to conduct that inspection. I've seen enough cases yeah. where uh, the court has reversed solely on that basis. Okay, Judge, you're asking a guy that likes openness, so okay. thanks. Okay. 
Mr. Decker, I think what Mr. Reisner is also getting at, and this part troubles me a bit, is whether you're asking me to um, potentially take on the, the role of creating an opinion. Um, whatever may be my knowledge of computers, uh, I'm not relying on that, except in the most general way that we would say is common sense. Um, I have to rely solely for the purposes of the record on a combination of expert opinion and lay opinion. Um, if I do that examination, particularly if I do it without, for instance, a, a master, what I suppose I could point under Rule 53, then I run the risk, I think, of forming uh, an opinion that's better left to the witnesses. So you need to address that point as well, because uh, I don't want to become a, uh, a witness to the action. I, I just want to remain as a fact writer. Okay. I, I understand that, and, and the distinction the distinction can be fine, but there's what we're what we're offering here is an opportunity to the court to look at the to look at these MDB files or this MDB file that is located that is that is loaded onto that uh, onto that machine. And by the way, if we agree with your formulation of understanding of Ellis and Griffiths that you that you have to um, perform an in-camera inspection of, of, of what we're what we're talking about to determine you know, what is and, and is not subject to release. And we're, we're, we have made the argument that there are certain portions of this and <coughs> that are, are and need to remain confidential, including the location of where those things are. So we want to make sure that there's an opportunity for the court uh, to look at that and, and, and confirm that those things are in fact there and see what, see what, we're, what we're talking about and what can be released and what can't be. Uh, one one possibility might be uh, you could take Exhibit B without the instructions and, and determine from there if, if what you need what you need is, is some sort of instruction. But we are also concerned that simply the instructions are going to be a roadmap of of how to extract confidential information from the file. If the court feels it's not necessary, that's fine. We want to make sure that it's available. I don't know whether it would be necessary, I suppose, until I look at it. Uh, but are you suggesting that if the records were to be disclosed, that instructions would have to accompany the disclosure? To the, to the public? To right. uh, no. Well, it depends on what you want to do with it. If, if, you, want to, uh, if you want to access it through, through, the, through the gyms, the, you know, the licensed gym system, then you're going in in the traditional way, then you're going to And an admonition not to plug it into a network. So okay. so that, that that's a very simple, straightforward, and that's why we did it that way. Is, the, is there any reason we can't show that to the plaintiff? Right? No. No, that's, that's what that is. is the password for access to the computer? Yes. And then there's a separate password for access to the Jam software. Right, and we we would, you know, it's a very, I made it very simple. I don't have a problem disclosing that here if, if you would like to know that or we can, you know, it, it's not a problem for them to know. Well, there's another issue here also, counsel, um, and it's more applies to Mr. Baker. You're offering up a, a laptop that's going to be uh, an exhibit and not retrievable because it's uh, it's going to be part of this record, and unless and until all of the exhibits are released, we won't have access to it any further. I mean, either I'm going to have access to it, or the clerk in her capacity as a custodian of the uh, record is going to have it. You understand that? The question is, does Dr. Moffin understand that? <laughs> the real question is, does the help desk understand it? And, and yes, I, I have warned them of this. Uh, this is one of their production machines. And our, you know, my theory is we're just going to charge the county attorney for another laptop. Wow. There are the <laughs> administrative work hours. Uh, yeah. It's I, I just want you all to know that uh, the only reason I'm doing this and what I need to do for the purposes of creating the record and preserving the record is to keep it uh, so that if anyone else wishes to 
look at it in the appellate process, they would have that opportunity to do so. We understand your is, is the password written down somewhere? Uh, because I can write it on that sheet of paper. It's a four letter word. Is it the same password for the laptop as for the gem software? I believe it was. I, I, need, to, I need to look at what the okay, password well, was for the laptop. I need, Council, I need you to write down the passwords. We're going to put them under seal uh, and they'll become part of the record. We're going to have that marked as. Uh, I mean, this will be marked as Exhibit B1. Uh, I also ordered that B1 be sealed because it contains a password. And just to be clear for the record, when we say password, Passwords for access to the laptop and then passwords for gems. I need both. Those will both be B1. Right. Just write it down on a single sheet of paper and then it will be uh, admitted under seal. Do you have any other witnesses? Uh, no, it doesn't appear in the last witness. Okay. Are there, do you have any rebuttal? So uh, when we're concluded, uh, we still have a cross-examination, of course. I assume it's for resident. Yeah, no, they're finished with the director. No, we're not finished with the director. Okay. Uh, we've gone an hour and a half now. 